And are you based in Los Angeles, I assume? Yep, you know, beach community, south of Los Angeles, yeah. Amazing, what uh, what beach community? Well, um, it's Redondo Beach, actually. Sweet, do you surf by any chance? No, do you? I used to, yeah. I uh, I lived in LA for a long time and I used to surf up in Ventura. I like Ventura County line. Yeah, like sometimes in Malibu, yeah. Well, well, one of the better aspects of climate change is they only use surfs up lately. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah it, was, it was really, up, it was ridiculously up last week. I mean, really? Was, oh no, it's like look like the North Shore or something like that. Or yeah. You know. Oh my gosh, yeah, bigger swells. Also, just the winter brings bigger swells in general. Yeah, but these were extra bigger swells. Oh yeah. Well, I miss it. Um. Yeah, so I just wanted to thank you, first of all, for uh, giving me some of your time today. Um, so just like a little bit more about the project. We are, um, I work for Ari's company, uh, Grack Films. I work alongside Jay Ponte. Um, and we are doing kind of the first issue of this uh, sort of experimental um, environmentalist zine. And so we're having a lot of interviews, doodles, poetry, thoughts, feelings, just all over expression. Um, about a lot of different things, but the, it's centrally uh, eco-focused. And so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to ask you some general questions um, about your history, uh, your involvement in activism, and kind of just the intersection of activism and art. Okay, I'll, I'll send you um, a couple. There's a, I'm about to be interviewed with somebody for the biggest magazine, and, and so I sent him one, a chapter or two from my, my upcoming book, and I'll, I can do that to you too. Um, the Hearts and Minds one um, kind of talks about I first got involved with the movie business coming off of activism. So I'll, so I'll send you that one. Can yeah. you open the Word doc? What's that? Do you want to, um, do you, 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 can you open a Word doc or you want to? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, here, I'll open a, open a Google doc, take some notes. Yeah, so I'll send you that. Somewhere. All right, sweet, awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so, so <laughs> First of all, the main uh, little tidbit I learned about you, which is what uh, sprouted this whole, um, you know, desire to talk and, and reach out, was um, I didn't realize that Jeff Lebowski was a real person. <laughs> um, and as a huge fan of the Big Lebowski, um, I was just really curious to find out more about the influence and what I found the most interesting, um, just kind of reading your bios and, and looking into your history is how almost antithetical to Jeff Lebowski I felt like you actually were because you've been so involved. Um, it seems like an activism since the Vietnam War, and I kind of just wanted to hear like what you know you're part of the Seattle Seven, like when when that first um, fire was kind of in your belly and and the first time you really got involved in activism. Well, oh, sure, vis-a-vis -vis the Big Lebowski, though, um, what you said there is, I mean, that set, um, you know, post the revolution, so to speak. And, and he's in a different state. The thing that people, one of the things that people like about the Big Lebowski and is true to me too, mm -hmm. is, is the dude is considered, um, I was giving a seminar at Esalen with Phil Cousineau, C-O-U-S-I-N-E-A-U, who's tied for first to the greatest living author in the world right now, by far and away. Um, he also, Joseph Campbell, and who as you know, you know, behind Star Wars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, when he was going down, he said to Phil, you got to take over where I left off and Phil wrote a book. Anyhow, we were giving a seminar at Esalen on myth, magic, and movies and up there at Big Sur. And I asked Phil, what's the mythological significance of the dude? He said, oh, that's easy. The dude is a holy fool. And like St. Francis, the original holy fool, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, um, the point is, one of the things people like about it is by being a, a pot smoking guy who doesn't seem to give a shit, he doesn't give a shit about things. And he takes kind of a holy fool because he does care, but, but he, at, on surface, he, he, he pretends he doesn't. And that gives him kind of a holy fool take on what's going on, uh, which people really like, you know, and in other words, he has a, he has a, a, a true sensor, so to speak, or whatever. Um, but just, you know, in terms of that comparison. Um, you know, um, but uh, we'll go back to Lebowski at some point, but um, I got involved um, 
basically, when I was going to high school, a lot of my, it's back east, a lot of my friends um, who were a year older were all, 150 of them joined the Marines en masse. I got out of the high school, I mean, like one guy did it, went to Camp Lejeune, and everybody else said, screw it, I was going to Vietnam. This is 66, 67, okay? And, mm -hmm. and, and I was headed that way too, probably, but I, was, I went to see the Marine recruiter, and he said, I'll come back in a year when you graduate. Something you wouldn't have said just a year later as the war escalated and got bigger and they needed more people. Um, and in that point, after that, I went to Europe. My father was an economic historian out of, Bur out of um, Cornell, had a Fulbright scholarship to go do what he wanted to do and write a book or whatever in Europe. And he went to Bologna, Italy. And my stepbrother and I were both dragged over to Bologna in what would have been our senior years. We ended up traveling around with the Living Theater. Do you know the Living Theater are? The Living they, Theater? Yeah, they were they were the progressive theater group of the 60s. And they did everything from classics like Antigone to also their version of Frankenstein. And they did a lot, a lot of stuff, but they were incredibly well known. They traveled all over. They were in the United States. They got kicked out or they were being kind of oppressed, so to speak. So they left and started traveling around here. Judith, back in Julian. Julian Beck and Judith Molina are the two best known people, but mm -hmm. but they're a whole bunch of them that traveled on VW buses and stuff. So we were all over Europe with them, and every town they went to was like, um, are you on a time thing right now? Because I'm rambling. Uh, I got all the time in the world, so. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm rambling away. And no, 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 please. Be more concise. I mean, I know how to do a six minute radio interview if I have to. Anyhow, but the, 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 the um, and so, you know, they'd go to a town and they were usually accused by the local bishop or cat top Catholic person of being, you know, crazy hippie anarchist, whatever. And so when they were normally scheduled to play in the city's big theater, and, and so they, they would get banned from that. And then everybody in town would come out and demonstrate thousands of people for, you know, what was their version of free speech stuff. For the right for them to, to play in the theater, you know, municipal theater, um, and um, and they usually won, but if they didn't, they played somewhere else. But we traveled around, and, and these guys were, you know, very political and, and very knowledgeable, and they, of course, gathered people around and were like, so we were there and all over Italy, and I was in Paris with them and stuff like that. By chance, also not by chance, David, my stepbrother, and I met the Rolling Stones. Um, in 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 um, Bologna, and we ended up going on tour with them too. And um, it was their first European tour. We were in Milan with them, and then I was in the studio with them in London for a while. Um, so um, so at seventeen, it was a pretty interesting year to uh, go from wanting to be a marine uh, and go to Vietnam to starting to be very much, you know, as all most Europeans were and everybody else taken out of the immediacy of all my friends, you know, were 16 or 17 or 18 wanted to go to Vietnam for the kicks of it more than anything else. It wasn't patriotism. Oh. Um, and, and, and then, you know, within a year, I was very much understood what was wrong with the war. I didn't get involved in the anti-war movement until I got back to the United States. Um, and I was part of something called the resistance where we turned in our draft cards, um, which we didn't have to do, um, and faced jail, which we didn't have to do in order to make a, a statement, you know, kind right. of, an, um, and um, and so I was part of that, and that revolved in the SDS and traveled all around New York State and then moved to Seattle um, in, well, I can tell you exactly, on December 5th, 1969, we left Ithaca to travel to Seattle to arrive on December 23rd to incite a riot on February 17th. And being busted on April 15th. Well, that, that, that's my, um, you know, for my indictment. Okay, so I can tell you all which was bullshit. You know, we certainly didn't leave Ithaca and Cornell with the notion of uh, inciting a riot on February 17th. Yeah. <laughs> lines inside a riot. Yes, we were in the, the other charge was conspiracy to incite a riot. And there was a demonstration about the Chicago 7 trial. And, you know, a couple of windows were broken and stuff like that, but thousands of people were there. And, and, and so basically, the Nixon administration had decided that they were going to break the anti-war movement. They had an enemies list with, you know, everybody from Paul Newman to Barbara Streisand on and Joe Namath was on as the quarterback and you know, Steve McQueen. Um, 
every single um, black Democrat was on it. Um, and I mean, 100% of them, all kinds of journalists. And they decided to crush the anti-war movement. And John Ehrlichman was a lawyer from Seattle and Hugo Crow was a lawyer from Seattle, both who were in Nixon's White House. Ehrlichman was the head of security and Crow was the lay liaison to the FBI and the Justice Department. And they came up with the idea. The idea was they're gonna, they were gonna destroy the anti-war movement in 41 cities and go after people. And they came up with the idea, why don't we do Seattle first because it's an isolated. Oh, sorry, I, I lost you. Um, give me one moment. <laughs> 